What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. As a lot of you know, we are in the process of putting together a new engine for our super cheap turbo Civic build. We decided to start off with a D16 Y8 just because that's what I was able to find locally for $150 on Facebook Marketplace. Now if any of you have ever built a Y8 or looked into building a Y8, especially for a turbo build, you know that they have a super common oiling issue which usually causes them to wipe out either a main bearing or a rod bearing which in our case it took out two rod bearings so in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing to fix that as well as a few things that we're going to try to do to help prevent that from happening again in the future so let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video through the intro I want to give you guys a closer look at the damage on the crankshaft that came out of our engine as well as talk about what we're going to be replacing it with so as you can see here on the factory crankshaft that came out of our D16 Y8 there is some heavy damage going on on the rod journals now you'll see one of them is completely smoked and wiped out that one got completely destroyed and then we have two other ones that are pretty heavily damaged but not as bad as that first one You'll also notice that our main journals look pretty clean. I was actually surprised about that after opening this thing up and seeing how bad the rod journals were. I was expecting the main journals to be pretty wiped out as well. Now what usually causes something like this is lack of oil. You would run out of oil at whatever RPM and it would just start eating itself. And I'm pretty confident that that is what happened here because the D16Y8 oil pump is also a known failure point. We're going to talk a whole lot more about these oil pumps here in a little while but first let's talk about what we're going to be replacing this crankshaft with so as you can see on the factory y8 crankshaft they only have one oil hole per journal for the main journals and for the rod journals now if you look over here at our new crankshaft this one looks basically brand new this is a d16 z6 crankshaft and it is fresh from the machine shop where they were able to polish this thing up and make it look brand new. Now some of the things that you will notice difference between the Z6 and the Y8 crankshaft. On this Z6 we have dual oil holes on every journal and as you can see on ours these are knurled so that's going to help this thing out especially at higher RPM getting oil to each bearing. Now talking about the Y8 oil pump is a highly debated topic. A lot of people say that they flow just as much as a Z6 or that they are not the issue. But if you think about it logically, I could see why Honda might use a less flowing oil pump on some crankshafts that have a single hole versus a crankshaft that has two holes that they know they're going to have to supply with more oil than the single hole version. So I could totally understand where the Y8 might have a little less output than an oil pump for a Z6. But trying to convert over to a Z6 entails a lot more. Let's take a look at a couple different oil pumps that I have and I will show you guys the main differences between them. As you guys can see, we now have three oil pumps laid out in front of us. This one here is the factory Y8 oil pump that came off of our engine. This one in the middle here is a Melling replacement pump. This one is part number M383. This would be a direct replacement for a Y8 engine. And then over here on the end, we have the ACL race series oil pump meant for a D16 Z6. This one is part number HD 1040 HP. As always, I will link both of these in the description below. And then this one would just be the factory Honda part number, which is what a lot of people do. They seem to be decent pumps from the factory. Now, when you go to do a oil pump replacement for a Y8, you don't have a whole lot of options. You can either go with a factory genuine Honda replacement pump, you can go with the Melling option, or you can get a factory one and send it out to have it ported or hand port it yourself. Now, as far as the Z6 is concerned, you can do all of those things, which a lot of people do, or you can go over to an ACL race series pump, which is this one that we have laid out right here in front of us. So for our purposes, I'm gonna say that this ACL pump, the aftermarket race series pump, is gonna outflow these two pumps. 
So that leads you to the thought, well, why don't you just put a Z6 oil pump on your Y8 engine? So there's a couple reasons that you have issues if you try to do something like that. Now, one of the main differences that you will notice right off the bat is that these two Y8 pumps do have a spot to mount a crankshaft position sensor. And as you will notice, the Z6 pump does not have that. Now, if you're running a Honda at ECU, that's an easy thing to bypass. We don't need a crankshaft sensor on our engine because we are running an OBD1 style ECU so that we can run Honda at S300. If you were putting this engine back into a car that was running a stock ECU, then that would be a problem. But in our case, it's not. The next issue you would run into is as you can see on the Y8 pumps, there is an extra slot right here for a dipstick tube. So we've got the dipstick that came out of our parts engine here. And as you can see, that goes right down in there. And then this part of the dipstick obviously would go to your oil pan and that's how you can check how much oil you have in the engine. So if you look at our Z6 from ACL over here, you will notice that there is no spot for a dipstick. And on the Z6, the dipstick spot is actually molded into the block. So that dipstick tube would slide into the block. So that is going to be a problem if you're trying to run a Z6 oil pump on a Y8 engine. So there are a couple ways to get around that, which I will show you guys here in a little while. Now there are a few other differences that I have noticed while looking over these pumps. Now if we take the cover off of this right here, you will be able to see if we hold these up next to each other that the Y8 pump is a round opening where this one is more of like a diamond shaped or it's just more oval, I should say, and it is a lot bigger as well as the studs are a lot bigger. So you're going to need a different pickup tube if you want to run the Z6 oil pump. Now, along with that, the oil pans themselves. I will grab the oil pan. We can set one up here so that you guys can see, but you will have an issue. The Z6 oil pump will not fit onto a Y8 pan. We've got a factory Y8 oil pump up here on the bench, and we're going to take one of our Y8 oil pumps. And as you can see, this is going to fit right into place just like it should because this is a factory replacement pump. And as you see, that falls right into place. It fits just how it should. Now, if we grab our Z6 oil pump from ACL, which this would be the same with a Honda factory Z6 pump as well, you can see that this one has the four studs, but they are not in the right location. There's just no way you could get that to fit. They are way off. The stud location and placement is just completely different on this pan. So that is another thing you would have to conquer if you were going to try to put a Z6 oil pump on a Y8 engine. Now that we've gone over a few of the different oil pump options, the question still remains, which oil pump did we decide to use for our new turbo build? Well, I decided to go with the ACL Race Series D16 Z6 oil pump. Now, I'm sure a bunch of you guys are probably like, hold on, wait a second, didn't you just say that there's no dipstick slot in the Z6 oil pump? Yes, that is correct. There is no spot for me to put a dipstick in the Z6 pump like the factory Y8 pump would have. But I've got an idea on how we can try to get around that. So we're going to roll out our engine. We're going to mock up the new pump and the new pan. And then I'll show you guys how I think we can get around the not having a dipstick issue. I interrupt today's video to tell you guys about a video that we did a little while back with Oxido LED. They are a great quality bulb and they have a plug and play bulb for many applications. I have been extremely happy with mine. And as you guys can see, compared to your standard halogen bulb, they are extremely bright. And we have worked with them to get you guys a code that you can enter at checkout to save 10%. Bought to build all capitals and no spaces. And I will also put a link to their website in the description of today's video. Let's get back to today's video. So before we even got a chance to bolt the new Z6 oil pump onto our block, we had an issue that we had found. I'm not sure if it's this way for all the oil pumps, but as you'll notice on this stock Y8 oil pump, that dowel pin is very short and shallow. It's just a locating dowel pin that locates the oil pump on the block. So that's the factory one. And then I have the Melling Y8 oil pump here. And as you'll notice, even on the factory Melling oil pump, the dowel pin is much longer and it would stop you from being able to bottom out the pump up against the block. We ran into that same issue on the Z6 oil pump from ACL and we had that same exact issue where the dowel was too long. 
So what we did was I took the ACL pump and a file and I just slowly turned it down until it was the same length as our factory pump that came off this engine. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell on camera, but the dowel pin on our ACL pump, we have worked down so that it is short enough to actually mount flush to the block. So that was the first issue that we ran into. I was surprised to see it on the melling pump that's made for the Y8 because it has the same issue, that dowel is too long. So I'm not sure if that's a common thing, but I just know that with both pumps that we bought, we had that same issue. Now we can finally bolt this thing up and start working through some of the other issues. Now that we've got the Z6 oil pump on, we can grab our oil pan and make sure that that's gonna line up, especially with this rear main housing. So let's grab a Z6 pan and test fit it. I'm not gonna bother putting a gasket in right now. We'll just dry fit this. And as you can see, it does fit. So we're good to go there. I'm not gonna tighten down the pan yet because I still need to show you guys what we're gonna do about our dipstick issue. So now that we know the pan fits, we can flip this thing over and I'll start showing you how we work through not having a dipstick. Now that we've got our engine sitting right side up, we can grab the cylinder head that we ported and put a new cam in in one of our last videos, slap that on here and I'll show you guys what's next. As you guys can see, we've got our D16 Y8 cylinder head laid out here on the bench. Just in case you missed some of our previous videos, this is a Y8 cylinder head that came off of the block that we're working on, but we completely went through this thing and freshened it up. We hand ported the intake and the exhaust ports, and then we hit it with a fresh coat of cast coat aluminum. Thing looks basically brand new. While we were at it, we went ahead and took the entire rocker arm and shaft assembly apart, threw a comp cam stage two in there with some Brian Crower valve springs. Thing is looking right. So just in case you guys missed that video, you can go back on the Honda playlist and check it out. We went over everything that we've done to that cylinder head to get it ready to make some boost. Now that we have our fresh cylinder head on here, I can finally show you guys our plan to retain a dipstick. So we can go ahead and take the factory Y8 valve cover off of this head. We'll set it over here on the side for now. Now that we've got the factory Y8 valve cover out of our way, you guys will notice that I have another valve cover in my hands. And as I flip this over, you guys are gonna notice some subtle differences. This valve cover belongs to a D17 series engine, and there's a few differences between this and the D16. One of the most noticeable differences is it has studs for each of our cylinders so that if you wanted to convert over to a coil pack retrofit kit, it would bolt right up to this valve cover. It's very common for people to use these valve covers when converting over to coil packs. Now one of the other big differences you'll notice is this valve cover has a much bigger breather. I believe this one's a 19 millimeter or three quarters, so much bigger than the breather that is on the D16 valve cover. Now the most important difference that you'll note for our situation is that this valve cover has a spot for a dipstick because on the factory D17 series engine, the dipstick would go into the valve cover, through the cylinder head, through the block, down to the oil pan. So let's go ahead and set this on here real quick. And as you guys will see, everything fits perfectly just like our D16 valve cover would. You can use all of your hardware as far as bolts concerned, and this thing will bolt right up and be a perfect swap. So now the only thing left for us to check is if our dipstick will go through this hole without any obstruction all the way down to the oil pan. So let's grab a dipstick and try it out. Now that we've got the new valve cover on, we can go ahead and make sure that the dipstick's gonna reach the oil pan without any obstructions. Now sadly, the only piece that I'm missing to complete this entire swap is the dipstick. I do have one on order, but I didn't have a D17 dipstick laying around. So we're gonna use our D16 dipstick. It's a little bit short, but it'll still do the job. And then after I'll put some welding wire on it just to show you guys where it's gonna come through the block. So let's go ahead and set this guy in. And as you can see, it goes right down through the valve cover, through the head, through the block, and hopefully down to the oil pan. So let's take a piece of welding wire, we'll stick it in there and see where it comes out. And as you can see, luckily it comes out of the drain back that is not blocked off. It comes right down to where the oil pan would be without any issue, nice and free flowing. There's gonna be plenty of room around that dipstick for the oil to continue to drain back, but we just found ourselves a new location for our dipstick. Now that we know our dipstick reaches the oil pan without any issue, there's only a couple things left to do. 
As you'll notice on this factory Z6 oil pan, there is a cutout for the factory dipstick, but since we have ours in a different location, we obviously can't use that one. So I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly where to make the hole. You can put a new dipstick in there and make a mark yourselves because it could depend on a few different variables. But in our case, ours is gonna end up right about here next to this bevel right here or this divot. Once you have the new hole made for your dipstick location, make sure you clean out the pan really good. You don't want any metal or debris in there when you go to bolt this thing up. And once we've got that done, you can go ahead and measure out however many quarts you want to run in your specific engine, whether it's four quarts, five quarts, six quarts, whatever that number is, you're going to want to take that much fluid and put it in your pan, bolt it up to the engine and put your dipstick in and see where it lands on your dipstick. Now, as you guys know, on many factory dipsticks, you have either drilled holes or you have scribed lines telling you where the high and low level is. In our case right here, this one has two holes for low and then high. You're gonna wanna do the same thing with your new dipstick or at least verify that it matches up with the dipstick you're using. Very easy to fix. So like I said, put the fluid of your choice in here, put your dipstick in and see where it lands with the measured amount that you wanna run. Once you have verified the marks on the dipstick you're using, or made your own marks, you will know that you have a good reference point at any time that you need to check your engine oil or when you're doing an oil change. So there you have it guys. If you've ever wanted to try running a Z6 oil pump on your Y8 build, this is what you're gonna need to do it. You're gonna need the D17 valve cover and dipstick as well as the Z6 oil pump and oil pan, which is gonna require a little bit of modification, but nothing too crazy. I will keep you guys in the loop on how this works out for us as well as the rest of this engine build. Now that we've got the ported cylinder head all back together with the new cam, I am super excited to get the bottom end finished up so that we can bolt it all together and get this thing dropped down into the super cheap Turbo Civic so that we can finally turn up the boost and see what we can make with this thing. So as always, I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and check us out on all of our other social media platforms. Facebook, TikTok, and Bought to Build Official on Instagram, and we will catch you on the next one.